There are certain fundamental marketing terms and concepts you should feel familiar with, especially so you might be confident in marketing meetings and job interviews. So let's review some of them now, starting with the marketing mix. Also called the four P's of marketing, is popularized by Jerome McCarthy in 1960. And the first P is product, which stands for the goods and services you offer, whether it's bottled water or car insurance or even education. And this P includes a product's design and development, as well as its branding and packaging. The next P is place or location, and it's just where a product or service is offered for sale and how it gets there. And this is how the product gets moved from the producer to the consumer. Thanks to interactive media, place is now actually everywhere. You can order pizzas and plane tickets, books, music, even college courses from wherever you are on the planet. And price determines at what charge a product or service is offered for sale to the customer. This establishes the level of a company's profit as it sells the product. Price has also been impacted by interactive media. You can now simultaneously compare the price of a given product or service between any number of vendors, such as when you purchase an airline ticket. And promotion. And this is how you let the consumers know about your product or service for sale. And this is done through advertising, personal selling, sales promotion, direct marketing, and other forms of publicity. Now, we could readily say these four P's are old-school marketing, deeply rooted in 20th century and earlier eras of thought. But if there is one shift that sums up the modern 21st century marketplace, it's that now the consumer is super-empowered through instant access to information and competitors' prices and even sharing reviews with one another. So the traditional four P's may well benefit from a rewrite according to a customer's perspective with the new four C's of marketing. And all we're going to do is take the old P principle and transfigure it to a consumer vantage point. For example, customer value. And that's how a product benefits a customer from the buyer's point of view and cost to the customer. And this covers price plus the other customer's costs, such as time spent traveling to a store or the shipping charges for a product bought online. Convenience for the buyer, or how easy is it for the customer to find information about a product or service as well as purchase it? and communication. And this is now a two-way dialogue or conversations with multiple people as a customer makes a purchasing decision. And positioning and targeting. These are two of the most important aspects of marketing, so much so that they weave throughout all the other P's and the C's. And positioning is simply your differentiation from competitors, or how different are you from everybody else, as well as your value proposition, or just what value do you have to offer, and product dimensions. And that means just what all does your product do? And some sample positions may be, are you the newest or the best, the most convenient, the cheapest, the best value, the coolest, the most prestigious, or do you offer the most features? For example, how do you position yourself as a person? Are you smart, hardworking, skilled? Do you make the lives better for the people around you? Now, that may be your position, for example, as you try to appeal to possible employers or even a potential mate. And targeting simply answers the question, who are you positioning your product for? And this can also be measured in terms of demographic segmentation, which we'll consider in a moment. Now, value proposition and product dimensions answer the question of just what do you do and what are the various dimensions of your product? For example, for many years, the big toothpaste battle was between Colgate and Crest. Colgate promised white teeth. Crest featured the American Dental Association seal of approval as a top cavity fighter. Well, then along came Close-Up, which offered a gel that claimed 
Not only will we make your teeth cleaner, but we'll make your mouth taste fresher too. And their slogan was, get a little closer with Close Up. It was a great proposition, and they won a big chunk of the toothpaste market. Well, soon Colgate and Crest jumped in with their own gels. Then along came the pump dispenser and Arm & Hammer's baking soda toothpaste. Well, then Colgate Total offered a gel and a baking soda and a pump dispenser and said it will fight cavities, freshen breath, reduce tartar, and fight gingivitis all at the same time, all within a single product. And it's called adding dimensions or expanding your reach into new demographic segments or going deeper within your existing segments. Well, marketers are going to position their product and services according to the demographic characteristics of their target audience. Some of the most important demographic measures are these. Gender, especially in many cultures where women are the primary decision makers for purchases. And age, young people certainly buy different things than older people. And income, especially considering disposable income which can be important for the sale of non-essential items or even luxury purchases such as travel. And education. Now, asking how much someone makes may be a sensitive question, but not so much asking about their education, which most people will readily discuss and may give you some indicator of their earnings. And location. For example, people in tropical climates will not likely be buying many heavy winter jackets. And marital status. Married people have different spending patterns than single people, especially once they have babies. And culture. And this is a complex measure and could well be the topic of an entire course in itself. Now, each product dimension and each target segment requires a different marketing strategy. For example, in the 1990s, Coca-Cola came up with 35 different attributes or dimensions for its soft drink flagship product as part of an always Coca-Cola campaign aimed at different market segments. And some of these product dimensions were it's refreshing, it's sociable, trendy, reliable, cool, smart, it understands me, it has a bite and a distinctive taste. It's modern, it's funny, emotional, simple, large, friendly, consistent, and everywhere, always within reach, and so on. Appealing to different target segments. And they developed ads for each of those dimensions, 35 in all, and ran them simultaneously. And it worked, increasing sales of Coca-Cola soft drink by 50% in just five years. Now, Philip Kotler, who's the Dean of Marketing Textbooks, says that if you nail positioning and targeting, all the rest of your marketing campaign will fall into place. And I'd suggest if you just nail targeting, then even position will fall into place on its own. Let's say I segment my market to a target of one, which is you. And if I know your happiest memory, if I know what scares you in the middle of the night, if I know what makes you feel safe and cherished, and if I can make you feel that no one in the world matters to me more than you do, well, then I might well win your loyalty, simply based on the position that I know what you need and I can meet it. And the moral of the story is know your audience, know your target, know your people, first and last. We all know what a brand is. Here's the textbook definition. A brand is any name, term, sign, symbol, or design intended to differentiate the goods or services from one seller with those of another. Some of the top global brands are Coca-Cola, Sony, Mercedes-Benz, Disney, Nestle, Toyota, McDonald's, Microsoft, Pepsi-Cola. Sergio Zyman is the former chief marketing officer for the Coca-Cola company, and he says the whole reason for creating a brand is to get consumers to identify a number of desirable qualities and traits with your specific product. And what he's saying is a brander's goal is to create a relationship with your customer so their life feels more complete because you're in it. 
And I love this quote from a Chicago mutual fund manager. He says, Harley Davidson is maybe the best brand name in the United States. Now, Coca-Cola is a pretty good brand name, but people don't tattoo it on their bodies. How many brands get permanently etched on people's skin? Well, here's a good example of how brand value can be measured. It's the premium people are willing to pay to be associated with a specific brand's products. For example, a Mickey Mouse ball will cost you $3.95, whereas a Jack in the Box ball will only cost you $0.99, cents and they're often thrown in free as special promotions. Well, we pay more for the Mickey Mouse ball. Not because it costs more to make or has a higher intrinsic value, but because we are willing to pay extra to be associated with a brand we love more than another. And just one final term to consider. I have a background in television news, and we always talked about audience share back when there were just three big contenders among the national networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. And how the pie was divided between those three was considered our market share. And the concept applies to other competitors within a given product or service category and simply answers the question, how big is your piece of the pie? So here's a quick summary of some key marketing concepts. There's the marketing mix, including the facets of price, product, place, and promotion. And the four C's of consumer side marketing, which are cost, customer value, convenience, and communication. Important to consider as you find your way in the 21st century marketplace. And positioning and targeting, answering the fundamental questions of what you have to offer and just who you're offering it to. And value proposition, or the benefits of what you have to offer. And product dimensions, or the different aspects of your product or service. And the demographic segments you may specify in your market campaign, especially the three key segments of age, gender, and income. And brand value, or how affectionate people might feel towards your product or your service. And market share, or simply, how big is your piece of the pie? And there you go. It's hardly a comprehensive list or analysis of the terms and concepts, but it's a good launching point as you move ahead in your studies of marketing.